How you all doing guys? Brandon here. Welcome back to Retro Dodo. This is a video I'm excited to make because this handheld feels as if it's been in the making for years now and the whole pre-order process was extremely unprofessional but finally I have the analog pocket in my hands in for review from the kind guys over at analog they sent one out to unbox review and test this is completely unbiased I can say anything I want about this handheld good bad or even ugly and that's exactly what I'm going to do but in this video it's all about the unboxing and once you finish this video check out our review they're all going up at the same time so I plan to have an unboxing video, a review video, and an accessories video out as of now, as you're watching this. So check out the channel after this video to take a look at that. But in this video, I wanna share with you what's inside the box, how it looks once you get it out the box, and how it works in terms of gameplay. So let's take a look. So let's dive right in. As you can see, Analog have kept the packaging quite slimline and minimalist, a bit like Apple do with their products. On the back, you've got what it is. I've got the console in black with a USB-C cable. So let's jump right into it. I am very excited to test this quite simply because I've heard and seen some great things and I want to see if it lives up to the hype okay the packaging seems to have gone for that matte black look oh i like that that is very sleek it's gonna show fingerprints in that but i'm liking it it's got the little analog logo at the bottom and on top and let's open it up oh okay wow that is bigger than I thought. That is actually a very large handheld. Let me get this out. Okay, wow. All right, this is big. This is very big. And I don't know why, but I just have my Switch here. As you can see, comparing it to a Switch, it is a fairly big handheld, which surprises me. Oh. Okay, the trigger buttons on the back or the shoulder buttons have this spring behind it, which gives it a very nice feedback. I, I have noticed the D-pad moves a lot, which could be an issue for some, but you know, half of the buttons are concaved, which is quite nice, the action buttons. It's all very minimalist it's a it's a hard high quality plastic it's not metal um, let's take a look around so you've got that really large screen here which is a 3.5 inch LCD display I will turn it on while we have a look around you know what I'm gonna put that aside because this still seems like there's a few things in here looks like a little Okay, oh, a tiny little, oh, you get a sticker there, which is quite nice, and a quick start guide that you use via a QR code. Pack, press power, hold for two seconds on or off. Quick single press to put asleep. Okay, that's, that's nice to know. Very simple instructions there. If you want more in-depth instructions, you go online. Pull that kind out, and here you get your USB-C to USB-C, and that seems like it's it in there. I will, that doesn't want to come out, so that's it, simple. I like that, very minimal, I'm digging it, very Apple indeed. Um, so let's get back to the handheld. Let me zoom in a little bit. So let's take a look around. You've got the screen here, which I can take off the cover, which is Gorilla Glass. Um, I'm gonna do the tutorial in a minute got your on off button your volume buttons which look like speakers up here as well on the back you've got this very DMG like uh, grill at the back the cartridge slot a very big head from the cartridge slot to the top of the screen which will obviously fit all of the adapters that come with it check out the video 
uh, on the channel if you want to see that. I'm really, really liking the trigger buttons. Very, very sleek, very professional, high quality. The analog logo here, your micro SD for extra storage. Then on your front, you've got the handheld itself with the FPGA logo, your start select and your home button. On the back, you have a port for your trading cable, USB-C, a little LED there. And what is that? Is that a headphone jack? That might be a headphone jack. And that is it. How sleek is that? Let's go through the tutorial. Um, press to continue, press to go back, press analog for menu, press for start, select, volume, press together for mute, press analog and press volume for brightness, press analog and okay, so this is all pretty straightforward stuff. I have to accept the, there you go, look, all right, so the menu looks very, very minimal, which I like. Um, let's have a look at tools. You've got Nano Loop, which is their, what do they call it? Their, their musical application, their synthesizer, all of that. That's a little bit new to me and I'm probably not the best person to talk to if you want to look at that more in depth. That is very much beyond me. They've got the GB Studio, which also allows you to create your own Game Boy games, which is quite nice. So I'm glad that they've partnered with GB Studio. They seem like a good uh, bunch of guys over there. And your systems and your settings basically goes into your display brightness. Let's whack up the brightness there. Ooh, that's pretty bright. Audio, global reset, don't want to do that. Systems. You can select your system and change all of the, can you change the aspect ratio? Yeah, you can change the display mode, color palettes, sharpness, size, frame blending. That's pretty nice. I'm liking that. So let's put in a cartridge. Okay, what do we play first? Hmm, I want an easy one. I want an easy one to load up that's pretty simple. We can start with the original Game Boy. So, I don't know if you just slot this in. Okay, like it's, it's, it feels like it's barely in, but there's no wiggle to it, which is, which is good. So if I press play cartridge, there it is. And it's put the original uh, like green DMG effect over it, which is quite nice. So if I was to press home, settings, can I change the way this looks? Display mode, analog GB, original GB. Should we try pocket? Oh wow, it's changed, look at that. And it's changed the color palette and the way it looks. And you can do that on the fly, which is quite cool. I guess you can add like original DMG. Oh, look at that. You can change the color palettes, pinball neon matrix. Okay, that's cool. Let's let's give it a little go. How do I do I Okay, so that's easier just to press the home button to get in. Wow, the screen is stunning. Oh. It's frozen. Do I give it a blow? Let's see if that works. Will it keep the settings? Yes. Looks like it's kept the screen settings. Maybe it just needed a good blow. Do you know what I mean? Wow, the screen is so nice. I'm liking that. Now, I kind of want to see what I have to do if I want to remove the cartridge. Do I quit game? 
the game is currently running. Any unsafe progress will be lost, confirmed. Now, can I just pull out the cartridge like so, add in a Game Boy Advance cartridge like that, just slots in, there is a bit of a gap, but you're gonna get that. And then do I just click play cartridge and just like that, you don't have to turn on or off. Wait, maybe you do. <laughs> Could well be. This is something I have to test in the review. Play cartridge. Now it works. Looks like you have to give them a classic blow. Oh, that screen. Woo! Because it's FPGA, you know you're going to get flawless gameplay out of it. And for those that don't know what FPGA is, it's basically a piece of technology that tries and duplicates the gameplay quality as identical as it can from the original console that it's trying to duplicate, quite simply. And which basically means this is the cartridge thinks it's a Game Boy Advance, and you're going to get the same output you would in terms of performance as a Game Boy Advance. Analog GBA, original GBA. Okay, so the analog GBA is basically slightly brighter and then the SP101, you get a little bit of pixelation out of it, a bit more color, but the analog GBA just looks so much better. Frame blending, I'm not sure what that does as of yet. Desaturation, size and position. Looks like you can change the height on this. I don't know how high I can go. Okay, so that's stretching it. You don't want that really. You know, that's as good as you're gonna get if you wanna stretch it to as much as you want or as little as you want, you can. If I just press home, that comes straight back out, continue. Easy, so simple and so effective. Bye. I want to see if I have to basically restart every time I pull out a cartridge. So I've quit the game. I'm pulling out a cartridge. I'm going to put in a Game Boy Color game. Let's go with. So I don't know if I've got a save file on this yet. No, that one worked. So I don't think you need to give it a blow and restart every time. I think that was just my old cartridges. Wow, look at that. I'm playing Pokemon Gold on a handheld console that came out in 2021 using the original cartridge. That is insane. I love it. You know what? It is a hefty, heavy handheld, like it's thick, you know? It's not streamlined, it's not light. If you drop this, it's gonna cause some damage, but hopefully not to the screen because of the Gorilla Glass. My first impressions are this is a serious product for those that are really into handheld gaming. And the great thing is that they're gonna be coming out of adapters and accessories and even a dock for your TV, so you can play this on your TV with up to four friends. So hopefully, there is a video about the accessories on this channel. They did say they were gonna send over that, so um, hopefully that is the case, but there is definitely, definitely a review video on the channel now. So go over and check that out. There is a look at the Analog Pocket, what could be one of the best handhelds of 2021, but I'll put that video out towards the end of the year. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Hit subscribe if you want even more handheld content, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.